100 of you guys watch my crappy videos. So uh, I took the liberty of, 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 of ranking. Oh God. Oh God. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh Jesus. Oh my goodness. You guys cannot even begin to fathom how long this took to set up. So before I even get started ranking these blasters, I need to explain how I'm ranking them because ranking nerf blasters should be impossible. Blasters have been split into three groups, primaries, secondaries, or sidearms. I judge a blaster whether I would rather use it as a primary, secondary, or sidearm over another blaster as that primary, secondary, or sidearm, respectively. And this list basically goes from the absolute lowest but complete waste of money up. I have taken the liberty of splitting these blasters into six groups. Well, I'm, I just have five fingers, but it's six. You have F tier, which is just like the lowest of the low, complete waste of money. Do not buy any of these products. Then you have D tier, which is a little bit more usable. You probably wouldn't want to buy anything here if you were actually planning on using these blasters, but they do fill a niche. Then you've got C tier, which is where, okay, the blasters are starting to get a little bit more reasonable. You'd probably enjoy them if you were in the right mindset. Then you've got B tier, which is where things are getting good blasters that I think most people would enjoy. Then you've got A tier, which is like really good products, basically, basically flawless, really great blasters. There are some problems with them, but for the most part, people would love these. And then there's the, uh, the S tier, the holy trinity of nerf blasters, which I could not find any complaints about if I tried for hours. And I literally said holy trinity because there are only three blasters that fit this category. But you know what? I've rambled enough. This is basically how the listing is gone. So let's start yelling about nerf blasters. So we start this adventure by crawling out of the corner we've been crying in for the last eight hours and turning to the left to find the Elite 2.0 Ace, the worst blaster I have ever seen in my life. This thing is completely useless, it's super uncomfortable, and it doesn't even fire across the room. Absolute waste of money. The Icon front gun long shot thing, I mean the long shot front gun all by itself, basically valueless same thing except it's bigger but at least it's more comfortable the ultra select is next and the only reason that this is here is because it is designed to fail this pusher system right here becomes too sensitive and it doesn't register darts anymore so this is a 60 dollar waste of money the cyclone shock would have probably been higher except for the fact that mine's broken it might be my fault but you're gonna notice most of the f tier blasters are broken for some reason or another i think that's the case with the ace but i don't care i hate this thing anyways next we've got the walking dead shotgun thing which could have been an awesome shotgun except for the fact that it breaks darts which is a very bad thing the Air Warriors Tommy 20, I really had to reflect on my own opinion about it because as a practical blaster, it's really useless unless you modify it. So yeah, that's why it's there. The Adventure Force Scorpion works, but is super slow. It literally shoots slower than the Nerf, uh, the Nerf Limited Needler, which is a bad thing and it's chain fed, so you don't even have the luxury of using a cylinder. The Titan CS50 I think would be great and it's an awesome prop except for the fact that mine's broken, which is a personal problem. Climbing out of the corner, the next blaster we see is the Scravenger Stock Blaster, which could have been a cool jolt reskin except for the fact that the ergonomics are terrible. They suck. The, uh, the Alpha Strike Fang is very similar. The original one had the worst ergonomics on the planet, and it literally feels like it's gonna snap in half every time I use it. The Mega Moto Strike is a horrible Mega Blaster that I don't think anybody should be using. It's not very efficient. It's super slow. It wastes batteries. It wastes a lot of time revving up. The trigger is terrible. Pretty much everything about this blaster is bad things about the Mega Series. Going up from there, we have the Zombie Strike Crossfire Bow, which was my first blaster from Nerf, but isn't a good one. It's huge, and it fires four darts. The Busby Slingshot had the potential to be good, except it's a slingshot, so it doesn't shoot straight at all. Up next, we've got the Mega Thunderhawk, which is only a little bit better than the Moto Strike. At least it shoots consistently 90% of the time, but that's pretty much the only compliment I can give it. The Star Wars thing right here, I mean, I never liked the Apollo in the first place, and this one is basically exactly the same, except it has slightly better ergonomics, but I still don't really like it. It is an awesome prop, but that's all it really is. 
After that, we've got the Jolt. Yeah, I don't really like the Jolt all that much, especially after I've used some of the other emergency pistols. After that, right on top of it, we've got the Mega Big Shot. Awesome when modded, pretty much useless when stock. We then have the X-Shot Bug Attack, whatever that thing is called, with the 10 Dark Clip. I just don't like clips. They're very inconsistent and very inefficient. After that, we've got the Overwatch McCree Blaster. It's a $40 jolt. And that one up there is a $25 jolt. So, yeah. The Mega Tri-Break could have been a cool triad reskin for the Mega Series, except it's gigantic! It's so big! The same thing goes with the Magnus, but I like the Magnus a bit more because the ergonomics are better and it has an internal magazine. After that, we've got the Doomlands Judge, which is almost useless, except if you really want a really big 3-dart shotgun, there you go. It works. And the Flip 16 could have been cool, except for the fact that it's broken. And that is where we end off F tier. The worst of the worst. Now that we move up to B tier, the first one that we see is the Nerf Limited Halo Needler. A fantastic prop, but it's terrible at being a Nerf Blaster. It only shoots 10 darts and it's super slow. Hiding underneath it is the Zombie Strike Long Shot. Probably the best long shot that we have, but the long shot really isn't good stock. It's good for modding, but that's basically it. After that, we've got the Dragon Power Ember Strike, which is pretty much the same. It's a very cool looking blaster, but it has no purpose to be here. The same thing goes with the Swarm Fire, although at least that's fully automatic and has twice the capacity of the Ember Strike, so it is technically an upgrade. The Turbo Advance shoots harder than the Swarm Fire and has 40 darts even though mine is technically broken, but it is still an upgrade over the Swarm Fire, I would still rather use that. Above that, we have the Fortnite Rocket Launcher. I like this blaster, but at the same time I don't, because it's just another rocket launcher. It's huge, and it fires a, a missile that you're probably not going to use all that much. Afterwards, we've got the Modulus Ion Fire, a super confusing and weird pistol. On top of that, we have the Fire Strike, and then the Quadrot, because I like the Fire Strike, but the Quadrot shoots more darts. Above that, we've got the Mega Double Breach, a comfy and pretty well-using Mega Blaster, but really useless. Not really gonna be used in wars. On top of that, we've got the Lawbringer, because I personally just like the Lawbringer. I like the ergonomics and the design. And after that, the Sideswipe, the worst rival blaster I have. The Elite 2.0 Echo is a really weird blaster, but it gets the job done all right. The Shell Strike is a little bit better. I would definitely prefer to use that in a Nerf War because of the shells and stuff. And then hiding underneath it, you've got the Trio, and then the Quad Fire, and then the Tetrad. All virtually the same blaster, but getting a little bit better each time you go up. Afterwards, we've got the Air Max Boss, an awesome sidearm secondary. On top of that, we've got the Diva Blaster, which not only is a good prop, but also a pretty good pistol. And finally, to cap off D tier, we've got the Ultra 3. In my opinion, the weakest out of the Ultra Blasters that I still have. With all that said, we're kind of still just getting started, because there's still a lot left to go through. It goes pretty far from here. Going up to C tier, the first blaster is the Boom Dozer. I really like the Boom Dozer, even though it's super impractical. Then we've got the Alien Menace Incisor, because it is practical, but it's really weird and it jams sometimes. The Mega Twin Shock could have definitely been my favorite Mega Blaster, except for the ungodly unreliable Smart ARs. Definitely the worst Smart AR Blaster that I have. Above that is the Duminator, a very classic blaster that I've had for years and will never part with, and I'll explain more of that in the review. On top of that, we've got the Fortnite BASRL, just a generally really fun sniper rifle, even though I personally consider it the weakest out of nerf snipers that I happen to own. Above that, we've got the Tri-Strike, which is a pretty good secondary, and then the Nerf Hyper Siege 50. When this blaster works, it works effectively, but when it doesn't work, it, it doesn't work. After that, we've got the Air Warriors Demolisher, the weirdest Rapid Strike reskin I've ever seen. I don't really like it that much, but it does work if what you're looking for is that. Next, you've got the Dino Squad Rex Rampage, a super strange strike reskin that doesn't do that much good, but it is still a very nice looking prop. After that, we've got the Triad, because the Triad is... Everybody knows what the Triad is. Above that, we have the Scravenger, because the Scravenger is kind of the baseline for secondaries that I happen to know. And then on top of that, we've got the first Flip Blaster that I actually think is worth buying, the Flip 8. I like the Flip 8. Above that, we've got the Mega Centurion, definitely an underrated blaster in my eyes. Although an overrated blaster in some other people's eyes. I don't know, I like the Centurion. After that, we've got the Fortnite Six Shooter. 
I don't know, I like the six shooter. And then the, the strong arm and then the disruptor. I like the strong arm not as much as the disruptor. I mean, I like the strong arm because of the mechanism, but the disruptor is just a little bit better. Afterwards, we've got the Aeon Pro, a pretty underwhelming blaster in my opinion, just because it doesn't do too much that the Nexus Pro doesn't already do. The Hades is a blaster I have a love-hate relationship. I simultaneously love it and can't stand it! I can't stand this blaster! But I'll go over that in a review, which will hopefully be coming soon. After that, we've got the rival Takedown, and then the rival Saturn, since they're both virtually the same, but I just prefer the Saturn over the Takedown because of the design, ergonomics, and the fact that it holds two extra rounds. After that, we've got the Finisher, which is a criminally underrated rival blaster, and after that, the Dart Zone Titan, a blaster I don't know what to think of at all. Sneakily hiding under the Titan, you've got the Phoenix, the Elite 2.0 Phoenix, not the Worker Phoenix. I wish it was the Worker Phoenix, but the Elite 2.0 Phoenix does the job well enough, I suppose. After that would have been the clear Vulcan and then the yellow Vulcan. Why? Well, I like the yellow Vulcan a bit more because it just feels more stable than the clear Vulcan. The clear Vulcan feels like it's gonna fall apart for some reason. The yellow one does not. The yellow one feels very stable. And to cap off C tier, we've got, well, the turbine. The Elite 2.0 Turbine. And with the Turbine, C tier has been capped off. So we're about halfway through and I want to quickly go over how I ranked these blasters because we're right at the midpoint. I used a point of reference blaster and I used the Ultra 1 as a reference point. Because the Ultra 1, like it or hate it, is probably the most mid blaster you could possibly imagine. It's got the most mid ergonomics, the most mid design, the mid capacity, and the mid performance of about 70 FPS, so it honestly makes a really good reference point to base other blasters off of, assuming that it would shoot elite darts and not not, not, not ultra rounds. Uh, I, I don't know why it was proprietary when it came out. I still don't know why to this very day, but that's not what we're here to talk about. If something is better than the Ultra 1, I generally consider it good. If it's worse than the Ultra 1, <sighs> You know the drill. With that said, starting off B tier, we have the Ultra 1, because it's a reference point. Where else am I going to put it other than right in the middle? Above that, we've got the Warden, a blaster that I personally like, but a lot of people are going to disagree with me because problems. After that, we've got the Knockout, and then the Scream Machine. I like those blasters a lot more than some other people do. Above that, we have the Kronos, a blaster that I personally think is overrated, but still a pretty good pistol nonetheless. Right above that is the Trailblazer, and then the Flip 32. In my opinion, the best of the Flip Shots blasters. Right above that, we've got the Roto Fury, the XL XS, and then the Villainator. The Villainator is really weird. A lot of people really love it, but I've had some problems with mine. But that's for a video that I will go over just addressing that. Right after that, we've got the Ultra Pharaoh, which is one of my favorite Ultra Blasters, and definitely one of the coolest snipers I've seen. Right above that, we have old, reliable, the, the Rhino Fire. I can't believe I forgot the name for a second. But right above the Rhino Fire, we have the Fortnite BAR. I like the BAR, and that is where B, B tier ends and things start to get real good. So as we start off A tier, this is where things start to get real good. We start off with the Dart Zone Storm Squad, an amazing little pistol that manages to be so cool for only $5. Afterwards, we've got the Mega Mastodon, a blaster that I personally think is a timeless classic that is super fun to play with to this very day. Afterwards, we've got the Rival Percy's, for obvious reasons. Right above that, we have the Rival Roundhouse, which is basically a Hades or an Artemis in a pistol format, which is genius because both of those blasters would have benefited from being a pistol originally. I don't know why they didn't do this earlier. And then we've got the Nexus Pro here, but there's still so many more blasters to go over. While the Nexus Pro is definitely an amazing blaster, it's not compatible with all magazines. Which is a really big issue because I want to put my 50 drum in this, and I can't. So, yeah, the Nexus Pro is awesome, but I like these other blasters more. On top of that, we have the Zuru Crusher, a blaster that really doesn't get enough attention. Well, actually, it's gotten a lot of attention, but it still deserves more attention because this blaster's great. On top of that, we have the Rival Helix, a blaster that you either love or hate. Love hate relationships. They're great, aren't they? And afterwards, we have the Hyper Mac 100. Okay, what is going on here? 
How is this super controversial blaster that I myself made a critical review on up above the Nexus Pro and the Percy's? Well, here's the thing. If you're going to be running a Mac 100 with regular hyper rounds, yeah, it sucks. It would probably fit somewhere in the middle of C tier. However, when you put foam hyper rounds into it, like the, the third party foam rounds, this thing punches hard and it manages to top almost everything else, at least everything that I've shown so far. So under the impression that you're going to be doing that with it, yeah, the Mac 100 is an awesome blaster. At least I personally think so, but we still got more things to go over for that time. Afterwards, we've got the Vortex Proton, which is a blaster that really needs some love because that is an awesome mechanism that doesn't seem to get appreciated enough. Afterwards, we've got the Vortex Praxis, a blaster that pretty much does the same thing, but in a more conventional style, similarly to the Alpha Trooper, which just so happens to be peeking out from behind the Modulus Long Strike, my favorite sniper rifle to date, and I don't think any other Nerf sniper rifle is going to be more fun than this one for me. But yeah, afterwards we've got the Alpha Trooper, specifically the Accu Strike one, and then the Hyperfire. And, and, and there's still more stuff going over it, even though I claimed it was almost the best blaster ever. Well, the Hyperfire is very fun, it definitely isn't the best blaster ever because the performance is terrible. It really is. You have to modify it to get good performance out of it. After that, though, we have the Ultra 2, what I believe to be the best Ultra Blaster ever, and the only one that I really think that everybody should have. Right above that is the Rapid Strike. It is there. Everybody knows why. The Rapid Strike is awesome. Right above that, we have the Evader, which is a blaster that not very many people seem to remember, despite it being really, really good. After that, we've got my favorite emergency pistol, the Reflex IX-1. I almost said IX-6 for some reason. I really like the Reflex. I think everybody should have one. And then we've got the Strife, the classic. Everybody knows what the Strife is. I don't need to go over it. Right above that, we have the Hyper Rush 40, which is definitely the best Hyper Blaster that they've come out with so far. The most reliable, the most consistent, and the funnest to play with. And finally, capping off A tier, we have the Elite 2.0 Moto Blitz. This thing is just so cool. I, I almost put it in S tier, but no. I, it, there, there are blasters that are even better than this. We come to S tier, the holy trinity of nerf. This is still subjective, but these three blasters, I seriously believe, are some of the best things that the company has ever put out. Starting off S tier, we have the rival Prometheus. This blaster is so much fun and so more practical at the same time, it basically makes practicality gimmicky. That's pretty much what it does. I use it every single time I nerf. Seriously, every single time. Right above that, we have the Dart Zone Spectrum. The Dart Zone Spectrum is just like the perfect strife. It shoots hard, it's comfortable, it's reliable, it looks great, it's the same size as the strife, and it's compatible with all magazines. And what I think is the best blaster ever? Yeah, you all knew it was coming, because you never saw it anywhere else. I love the Infinis. I love the Infinis so much. It is a beacon for what Nerf is. A toy brand for Nerf guns, Nerf blasters, that combines being practical with being fun. It introduces a gimmick never seen before, does it effectively, doesn't cheap out on it, and really provides a use for it. There has never been another Nerf blaster ever released that has done that. Like, seriously, this is what Nerf represents in the first place. It's so cool, it's so much fun, and it's so effective. This is the best Nerf blaster ever released. At least my absolute favorite one. I will never have a blaster that I love more than the Infinis. This will forever be my favorite Nerf blaster. And you know what? I'm, I'm putting my fist down on that one. They will never be able to top this. Not for me. And if I ever have to go back on that because somehow they create something that's even cooler and better and more original than the Infinis, I will eat my own pants. <laughs>
I don't care if 100 subscribers is a tiny milestone. I want to say thank you because I would rather have 100 people watching who actually legitimately care about my content rather than a million people who just watch to add more views to the counter. This channel has been such a joy to create and to run. It's been unlike anything else I've gotten to experience before, and I wouldn't have even bothered trying to do this if it wasn't for the motivation that all of you gave me to continue making videos and to continue reviewing these, these ridiculous blasters. I would have probably moved on to other more boring things by now, and yet I didn't. I'm still here, and I'm still reviewing Nerf guns, and I will still be reviewing Nerf guns until I physically can't review Nerf guns anymore. How long is that gonna take? I don't know, but I hope that it's not anytime soon, because I love this. I love this so much. Whether a blaster is good or bad, it, it makes me feel happy to be able to talk about it and to be listened to by other people who like the same hobby. It's, it's wonderful. It really is. That's all I really have to say today. I appreciate everybody who watches my content, whether or not it's good or bad. It's just a passion project. So with that said, subscribe if you're new. Like if you enjoyed. Comment down below, what is your favorite Nerf Blaster ever made? And how did you get into the hobby? And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.